Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is the data show presentation for the ileum and large intestine. Starting with the ileum, of course, we know that the ileum is a part of the small intestine having villi and crypts, but it is characterized by the presence of a collection of lymphocytes forming lymph follicles called pious patches. These pious patches are present at one side only of the circumference, which is the side opposing the site of attachment of the mesentery. Here the mesentery is attached. On the anti-mesenteric side, we have the pious patches. Of course, you know that uh, the um, villi over the pious patches are very uh, short and even maybe absent. The uh, villi of the ileum are characterized by being thin and cylinder. Here we will see that we have a luminal organ or a hollow organ in which we can see the projecting villi. Not only that, but we can see that they have a downward invagination in the form of a tube. This is a simple tubular gland called cryptoflibrin. So we have both villi and crypts. In the submucosa, you will notice the presence of the lymphoid follicles called pious patches which are present at only one side of the circumference. Here we can see only one side and we cannot see the other side. But if we uh, look to the slide uh, when it is in complete picture, you can see that they are only present in one side, which is the anti-mesenteric border. And this is the musculosa, inner circular and outer longitudinal. So the presence of villi together with the crypts means small intestine. The presence of pious patches and not Brunner's glands, this means that it is the ileum section. Here we have much more magnification and you can see how much uh, we have uh, villi here projecting into the lumen, but they are of course uh, cylinder and they are uh, thin. Here we can see the downward invagination to form the crypts of the liberkin. Crypts of the liberkin. Here we have sections in the crypts. Sometimes you can see the whole length of the crypt, and sometimes you can see just sections in the crypts. Uh, not only that, but you can see that we have the lymphoid follicles called pious patches presenting in the submucosa and piercing the even the muscular mucosa to appear in the lamina propria of the mucosa. Here we have the muscle layer, of course, inner circular and outer longitudinal. Here we have the site of the muscularis mucosa this is the red color and it is pierced by much accumulation of the lymphocytes and their passage from the submucosa to the lamina propria of the mucosa here we have a typical picture we have these uh, uh, short uh, and uh, cylinder thin villi not broad leaf like like those of the duodenum and we have the a crypts of Leberkin looking in the form of uh, tubules and then we have the muscularis mucosa the pious patches here are not penetrating the muscularis mucosa like that like the previous one and then we have the these are the connective tissue of the submucosa and this is the muscle layer formed of inner circular and outer longitudinal and then we have the outer covering of the serosa here we have a quiz for this uh, uh, slide. Here you can see it's a hollow organ. We have uh, uh, projections on the surface which are uh, uh, cylinder and thin uh, and they are more or less short. And we have uh, tubules, so these are the villi and these are the crypts. This red line, very evident muscularis mucosa. And then we can see the uh, submucosa full of these pious patches in this situation you can see the piercing of the lymphocytes to the muscularis mucosa sometimes and then we have the muscle layer all of this is the muscle layer here which is inner circular and outer longitudinal and then we have the outer serosa identify the organ it is uh, ileum what are the structures pointed to by the black arrow they are the villi the white arrow the yellow arrow here the crypts of leberkin white arrow lymphoid follicles or pious patches identify the layer it is the muscle layer uh, 
actually this is the inner circular but you can see see uh, say that it is the musculosa musculosa layer of the uh, ilium but if you have a line here this is the outer longitudinal layer so this is the inner circular of the musculosa and this is the outer longitudinal of the musculosa and on the surface we have the serosa now move to the large intestine and you can see here that we have a band here this is a band and this is another band and third band cannot be seen in the picture these bands are called the tinea coli which is nothing but three bands of uh, longitudinal muscle fibers of the musculosa and these bands are responsible for uh, the appearance of this um, uh, circulation in um, the large intestine observe that they are not present in the rectum or the anal canal they are only present in the colon these tinea coli now this is the picture under the microscope you can see it's uh, this is a lumen and this is the mucosa bounded here by the muscularis mucosa then we have the submucosa inner circular outer longitudinal and serosa the most important feature is in the mucosa it is not provided with finger like projections no it shows only the uh, tubules called the intestinal glands or crepes of leberkin these are the crepes of leberkin sometimes are completely cut to appear in its uh, uh, form in the form of a tubule sometimes they have uh, some transverse sections or oblique sections in them so they cannot see the whole tubule like these pictures here we cannot see any villi projecting on the surface this is the surface and this is the downward invagination to form the crepes of leberkin and uh, nothing also uh, specific in the submucosa you cannot see the pious patches you cannot see the Brunner's glands and then the muscle layer here we have in a certain part of the muscle so we cannot see that uh, the outer longitudinal in the form of bands no because I'm not seeing the whole or a larger part of the circumference of the uh, section here we have the uh, higher magnification where we can see these uh, are typical crypts of Leberkin here uh, occupying almost the whole thickness of the mucosa and this is the muscularist mucosa the uh, connective tissue of the submucosa and then the musculosa all these uh, striations or white striations here are those of Krebs of Leberkin so the mucosa is thick it is folded and showing these uh, striations no villi on the surface by higher magnification of the crypt you can see that we have a lot of uh, goblet cells full of the dissolved mucus and this is logic because here in the large intestine most of the absorbed material have been taken by the blood and uh, the undigested material which is now become hard due to absorption of water and now passing in the large intestine so we need more lubrication more protection which is provided by the goblet cells here we have a hard material passing so more protection and lubrication by more number of the goblet cells here we can see the whole circumference of the large intestine here we have the thick folded mucosa and it shows these striations white striations and then we have the muscle layer inner circular complete and the outer longitudinal in the form of three bands called tinea coli here we have the tinea coli one of the tinea coli projecting on the surface and this is the inner circular uh, layer of the musculosa we have the appendix section and this is the appendix of the rabbit because in the rabbit appendix we have a very characteristic inverted y shaped crypt here the crypt is typical shape of the y letter y inverted y and here we have uh, uh, no muscularis mucosa uh, the lymph follicles are actually piercing the muscularis mucosa and passing to appear in the lamina propria the lymph follicles here should be present in the whole circumference of the organ and then we have a very weak musculosa 
and the cirrhosis. Here, remember that we have the ileum. In this picture, you can see some shape which is very uh, close to the appearance of Y sometimes, but it is not present all through. Not only that, but we have the projecting villi on the surface. So we have villi here and uh, the crypts. So it is the ileum. I cannot say that they have follicles at one side because it is not apparent in the section because it is a part of the section. Again, compare with the previous one also. Here we have typical, very evident inverted Y and we don't have villi. We have, you can draw a line on the surface. You can draw by a pencil a line on the surface here, but um, in the other section, you cannot make this uh, step because we have projections on the surface which are the villi. So we have here villi, and in the previous we don't have villi. Here the crypts are not typical uh, inverted Y. Some of them appear to be like that, but actually they are not inverted Y. They are um, tubular, simple tubular, mostly, but not uh, typical inverted Y like this one. Here we have also a section. Here I can draw a line on the surface, so I don't have a line. Then it is uh, the appendix because I have the classic uh, inverted Y, no line, and the follicles here appear. Uh, yeah, and in part of the yeah, appear, actually it should be all through the section, but I cannot see the whole section to say that it is present along the whole circumference of the organ. Also, we have here the serosa, of course. And the muscle is very weak muscle, and the serosa is on the surface. Here, the appendix of the human. Here, we cannot see the inverted Y. We can see the typical Y, uh, typical tubular crypts, not inverted Y, simple tube. And we cannot see at all any villi. You can draw a line on the human like this. So I have no villi. Here, I can see that the Lymphoid follicles are present all through the circumference of uh, the organ. Of course, here we have a, a somewhat um, muscle layer, but actually it is relatively not developed. This is the musculosa, and then we have the serosa on the surface. Now we start the quiz. Here, identify the structures indicated by the black arrows. Here, I have tubules, so these are the intestinal crypts of Leberkin. White arrow, it is the tinea coli, the organ is the large intestine. Why? Because of two features. I have crypts with no villi, and I don't have a continuous uh, outer longitudinal layer. I have the tinea coli. This is a section in large intestine, because I have only crypts, I don't have villi on the surface. Uh, identify A, this is the intestinal crypt of Leberkin, B, lamina propria, the black arrow points to the muscularis mucosa, the black line denotes uh, the submucosa. Of course, these are the blood vessels present in the submucosa connective tissue layer. Number three, identify the organ. Of course, these tubules with many goblet cells, these are belonging to the large intestine. Identify the structure indicated by the arrow, 38, this is the intestinal crypt. Identify the cell indicated by arrow, 39, this is the goblet cell vacuolate. Identify the layer indicated by the arrow, 40, it is the muscularis mucosa. The organ is, here you can see that we have follicles all through the circumference. And you can draw a line denoting the outline of the lumen, so these is devoid of villi, so this is the appendix. Mention one visible feature, the presence of uh, the lymphoid follicles all through the circumference of the organ. Inflammation of this organ is known as appendicitis. Identify A and B. Here we have A, it is the appendix, and B, it is the ileum. Why? Mention one cause, the presence of the follicles all through the circumference, here only at one side. Another cause, we, have don't, we don't have villi here, and here we have villi. And number six, photos A and B show the basal parts of intestinal crypts. 
uh, identify each organ here the crypt is showing a very specific cell for the small intestine which is the penis cell characterized by being pyramidal with the uh, basal rounded nucleus the basal part is basophilic and the apical part is full of red granules secretory granules these cells are specific for the small intestine so this is a small intestine and this one is devoid of the penis cells and in addition we have a lot of goblet cells compared to this so we have few goblet relatively lesser relatively more another cause the presence of the penis in the small intestine absence in the large intestine and these are two criteria for the differentiation identify the different organs a b c d a here it is lined by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium so it should be esophagus and i can see mucus gland so it is esophagus dog here here we have villi and we have crypts so it should be small intestine now look at the submucosa i can see the brunous gland so this is the duodenum number c it is provided only with the crypts here crypts only so this is the large intestine and here we have D, we have the pits and a gland. The pit to the gland is 1 to 4. In the gland, you can see acidophilic and basophilic. So it is 100% fundus of the stomach. Number 8, identify the organ and be specific. This organ is belonging to the uh, large intestine because I don't have a villi. But to be more specific, I should mention it is the appendix because I have inverted Y intestinal crypts. Uh, mention two visible characteristics features. Actually, here I don't have the lie, so it is a large intestine. I have inverted Y shaped crypts. And of course, yeah, I cannot say that the follicles are present all through the circumference because it is a part of the picture. So the most uh, uh, perfect uh, features visible features is the absence of the villi and the presence of inverted y-shaped crypts you can add a, a, a statement over the lymphoid follicles thank you very much